What's up guys? So Rod over at Free Camp K Wood has issued a challenge. It's called the True Story Challenge. So stay tuned, here's my story. Hey guys, what's up? So I'm out here cleaning up my paddleboard today, uh, getting things ready for my next adventure, and I thought I would share uh, my true story, part of the true story challenge that's going on. Um, Rod over at Free Camp shared his fr uh, true story, and man, <laughs> this story was crazy. So my stepson and I have been um, thinking about Rod's story for about two days now. Um, we watched his video, and if you guys get a chance, uh, check him out. He's over at Free Camp. It used to be Beat Around the Bushcraft, but um, he's now Free Camp, and uh, he just shared his true story, and it's a little wild, so mine can't compare to that, but I thought I'd go ahead and give it a go. Okay, so my true story. Well, I've been kayak camping for almost 20 years now, and um, before I started kayak camping, I was uh, a bicycle tourist, or I, I camped on my bicycle, um, and the way I got into kayaks and paddle boards was the roads were just a little too dangerous, and um, I could only see so much, and I thought to myself, man, it'd be great just to cruise down a river or, or cruise through the water and and camp and um so I started researching kayak camping and um I got into it and um 20 years later I've evolved to the Kaku paddle boards um which you guys will see on my adventures uh, we have a lot of fun but anyways um my true story um I was bicycle touring from Melbourne Beach to the Everglades which is it's about 250 miles or maybe a little more um, and um, my first night well actually uh, back then we didn't have uh, Google Maps and all that so uh, I had my Florida Atlas out and um, I found my first campsite um, it said there was a, a campsite there you could camp um, I had flagged out each each step along the way where I was going to camp. And my first camp, I believe, was uh, near Jupiter Inlet. And um, anyways, uh, I biked about 50, 60 miles that day. And I came to my, my designated camping spot. <laughs> Needless to say, it wasn't a camping spot. So it was getting dark quick, and I had to stealth camp. So, I went down, I paddled down by a big bridge, um, and, um, kind of swung up under the bridge and found some trees and, um, set up my tent, uh, which back then was, um, I think, a, a Eureka Solitaire. It was uh, just a small one-man tent, and, um, I was carrying a pistol at the time. I had a, a little 25 that I carried with me, and um, I got packed up in there and uh, lay down, went to bed, and um, laying there with my pistol on my chest because I was scared to death. It was like, you know, that's where the bombs kind of hung out under the, the bridge there, and I should never have went there. Um, but anyways, I'm sleeping, and it's about 7 o'clock at night. Um, and I guess it was a, a weekend night because a car pulled in and they were probably 10, 15 feet from me, but they couldn't see me. Um, anyways, uh, they got out and they were drinking and I can hear them. They were drinking and partying and kind of raising cane. And I, I just felt, um, like if they discover me back here, uh, there's probably going to be some problems. Or somebody's probably going to mess with me. Um, so I laid there uh, with that pistol on my chest, which was a dumb move. <laughs> uh, I don't really carry a pistol anymore uh, when I'm camping every now and then. But 
you know, that's a whole other story. But I laid there with that pistol on my chest and um, just waiting for someone to find me. And uh, thank God uh, they, they packed up and uh, they left. You know, after a few hours of drinking and hanging out and partying, um, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, the whole time, I mean, 15, 20 feet away, they never knew that I was in a tent camp there under that bridge. So uh, that's the first part of the story. Um, that was the first night. Uh, I think finally... The second night was kind of boring. I made it to a campsite and hung out. And um, my third night, I was in the Everglades. Um, or maybe it was Okeechobee. I think I was in Okeechobee. And I uh, set up camp. And if you ever ever camped in Florida, or at least down near the East Coast, the raccoons are terrible. I mean, they're out for food and they don't care, you know, what they do to get it. And, um, so I, I had set up my tent and, um, I was sleeping and I heard something and I shined the light out of the screen and there's like two or three raccoons just staring right at me. Um, so I, I yell at them, get out of here, get out of here. And again, I had my pistol, you know, laid up on my chest. I'm like, dang, these things are going to tear into my tent and, and bite me or something. So, um, I'd shine my light about every 15, 20 minutes, and there was a, a little ditch that ran down um, in front of the, the tent there, <clears throat> which was probably about 50 feet out, but I could see uh, probably at least 20 to 30 eyes, raccoon eyes. They were just a whole pack of them just coming in <laughs> to check out me, and um, that was it was pretty scary scary i mean you wouldn't think so but it was scary with these critters coming down and, and coming right up to my tent so needless to say i got out and there was a little rocky road there and i picked up a bunch of rocks and threw it at them so i went through this about till two o'clock in the morning i'm throwing rocks at at raccoons <laughs> and uh finally i just was so tired uh, I, I got in the tent and I, I passed out my pistol on my chest and um, man, I was tired that morning. So uh, third night uh, was in the Everglades. And if you've ever been to the Everglades uh, National Park there, um, as you're getting in there, there's alligators just laying on the side of the road. There would be a 14 foot alligator and I'd have to ride you know, right over to the side around them. And uh, there's alligators laying everywhere. They're just walking around, you know, just chilling. So that's pretty cool. I rode around, I checked everything out, and I took a bunch of pictures. And I, I really wish I would have kept up with my pictures and, and my videos uh, back then because I have nothing now, nothing to show for that. Um, and that's one reason that I'm, I'm doing this channel. Um is to record memories, record adventures. Um, you know, it's it's great, especially for when my sons grow up. They can see their old dad, you know, kayak camping or paddleboard camping, um, sleeping in a hammock for 200 nights. Um, I wouldn't be a boring old fella, let's put it that way. And uh, uh, soon they'll be old enough where I can get them on the paddleboard and we can share some of these adventures. So, anyways, um, I'm in the Everglades. I'm camping. I think this is uh, the third night, <clears throat> and um, it's I got my tent set up. I'm at a at a regular campsite there, and um, like I say, there's alligators everywhere. So I go back to the campsite, and there's some a guy fishing there, and uh, I think it was in the bay right there. My campsite was next to the the salt water, I remember, and uh, there was another guy laying there, <laughs> drunk, and he was passed out, I mean, he was, he was out, and so I went over there, and was talking to the guy that was fishing, and uh, you can tell they had been drinking, having a good time, and this other guy was passed out, well, I look over, and here comes this 
humongous crocodile. And yes, it was a crocodile. Um, maybe he had to be at least 14 feet. I mean, this huge crocodile coming right at us. And I'm like, holy crap. You know, and I tell the guy, I said, look at this. And he's coming. The crocodile's just coming right towards us, you know, just walking. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you better wake your buddy up and tell him there's a crocodile coming. If he doesn't move, well, it might be trouble. So he shakes his buddy. His buddy's like, oh, leave me alone. And he's like, man, there's a, there's a alligator coming, which it was a crocodile, but, you know, everybody calls them alligators um, there because there is a mixture of alligators and crocodiles dials at the Everglades. Um, but this was truly a crocodile because he did go into the salt water and his snout was uh, a little different. So, anyways, the guy was, you know, moaning and groaning. And the, and the other guy says, he says, man, there's an alligator coming right towards you. You got to get up. And the guy was like, oh, you've been telling me that all day. And he just passed back out. Well, needless to say, maybe you know, 10 feet before this thing gets to him, he gets him up, and we all scurry away, and I, I stepped, you know, I went pretty far out away, but I was taking pictures and everything, and um, this thing w walked right by him, I mean, right by him, and just slid right into the bay, and to this day, I always joke about this story, because <laughs> what happens if that guy didn't get up? you know, I roll over. Granted, to, to say that those, you know, crocodiles and alligators must be used to people, but if he came in contact that close with that guy, um, it, who knows what happens. If the guy startled the thing, that thing could have bit the crap out of him, or, you know, whatever. Uh, did a death roll on him. So, um, Rod, not as exciting as your story. But it was pretty exciting back then. I was on a bicycle then. I was camping on my bicycle. Um, now I'm on the old paddle board, um, which stay tuned to my videos because I am going to have some good adventures coming up. We're going to the Swanee. Um, I'm bringing my dad, my brother, and we're going to get dad on the rope swings again. <laughs> I don't know if you, you saw the other video where dad, he's... Uh, He's almost 80 years old, and he's swinging from a rope swing, and he bust his butt. So watch that video if you get a chance, and uh, I got some new stuff coming up. Um, but that was my story, and hopefully I'll have many more stories to tell like this. So stay tuned to the channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Yeah.